Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy, very snowy Tuesday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. As always, want to be wishing you well. Got a new shirt on today, but also some new price action. So let's get into the live scene right now. As I wish you the best, the best, the happiest, the happiest Tuesdays or Mondays, Monday, Tuesday, whatever fucking day it is. Doesn't matter, man. It's Tuesday. I just checked on my computer. There we go. All righty, solved. Okay, so Bitcoin closing its first daily total below the yellow 20 minute exponential in a very long time. I think the last time that we actually did this was. Um, yeah, literally about one month ago. And again, this is this is um, of great importance to me. Just looking at uh, moving averages right here um, above everything else, which is what I'm most comfortable um, actually speaking about to begin with. And we can see that, yes, we have blown our first dildo back below the 21 exponential more importantly also as you do see this yellow and green moving average cross each other this has been a great indication for the past year of kind of getting the last edge of a nice bull trap essentially as you know the whole last year has been essentially a down market so you know, going back in time, I do want to show something that we now have confirmation on, which basically each and every time that we have seen the, the yellow get on top of the green in the past year, well, as you can see right here, it calls the very end of this rally. Then once we break back down below and close our first total below that yellow 21 exponential, it is straight on down to the low side of the range. This one coming all the way back from 7,400 to 6,000. The time before that was right over here, getting this last kind of rally going into this bull trap at 8,400 in early August, breaking down below the yellow 21 exponential moving average right here, and then straight shot down to the bottom side of the range beyond that. And then the time before that was right over here, of course, in May of last year going all the way to 10,000 Bitcoin uh, is caught is, is is caught by this right over here. We break down below the yellow 20 max exponential right around uh, 9,000 even, and then a straight shot down all the way to the range low of 6,000. So again, we actually have seen this happen. Um, it is confirmed as of yesterday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And what I'm looking for now is I'm actually looking for a little bit of a pullback. I would like to see a pullback uh, around the green, um, anywhere around 37.30, 37.50, and I'd actually be looking to take a position right now. I don't really have any positions going on. I'm pretty much flat. I did close or, or, or kind of uh, loosen up some of my uh, exposure yesterday by buying some of the spot underline. Uh, but basically, you know, uh, just looking to add somewhere right around here, right around 37, 30, 37, 50, something like that. Tentatively speaking, of course, and you know, just like with any trade setup, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, blah, 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 blah. But what I can say is that um, I like the setup right here, not because it's like guaranteed to work out. That's not what technical analysis is about. That's not what trading is about. But it does offer up a very good risk reward profile as I do see that we have a very easy place to be managing risk upon uh, right around this 3750 uh, ish area. So as long as Bitcoin's below there, I'm happy to take a trade like this. And the second that Bitcoin goes above, well, I would happily get out, take the whatever $10 loss it might be, and then reposition uh, um, later. As if that were to happen, if we get actually back above 3750, I uh, I would strongly believe that some news going on. But for now, um, does look like the lower time frames want a little bit of a uh, little bit of up as well. I think the hourly is printing some bullish divergence coming off the low. Yes, one, two strikes. We do have hourly stokes headed up uh, north as well. And we did just grant, get, uh, regain the 21 exponential right here. You do see that the green 55 is actually aligning perfectly with that 37, um, 30 resistance right here on BitMexico. So all these things, you know, kind of agreeing with each other. Same thing with the two hour, I believe as well. Yeah, two hour bullish divergence coming off the low, uh, regain the exponential on this guy. We also have two hour stokes just uh, headed, headed north as well. And we have the same sort of resistances coming in the same sort of area. By the way, two hour dildo time frame actually did just get death crossed. And uh, three hour is actually quite far, far away. I was going to say that it, it might be close as well. It's not actually. It's going to take another uh, another few days of price action below 3730, which right now it actually looks like it wants to rally a little bit. By the way, three hour stokes have crossed the upside. It looks like it is just about confirmed, or at least it. Or, or, I, or I would be looking for some more um, some more momentum being gained at the end of this next uh, 49 minutes and 35 seconds when we get the next tick on this guy. But again, you see the same sort of moving averages coming around where? Coming around right at this 37, 30-ish area. So a lot of things coming around this area and... Um, and I am looking for a trade there. If we do get it, of course, you know, there's there's variability, there's variability in the market. And what if, you know, we head south first? Well, if we took out the current low, if we took out about 36.90, uh, I probably just hop into a trade off that. But as I do want to show on the daily dollar time frame that, or sorry, perhaps it's best seen on the four hour. Yeah, it is best seen on the four hour, actually. And let's just get rid of all of this, get rid of the indications. And you can see that this descending trend line that was, you know, kind of consolidating Bitcoin for the past uh, two and a half months, going 
going all the way from the November high to the early January high, which we broke out of in um, late February, we're actually resting back on that right now, which is currently coming in around this 3650-ish area, which is of great importance the more and more that I look at it. You do see the four-hour 200 simple moon average kind of creep its way up. You do see the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement coming right around there. And obviously, this trend line, which we broke out of, you know, you'd like to see that act as support. I also believe that the 12-hour um, 200 simple is kind of aligning with it as well, which, by the way, we should actually do a little bit of dissection on this. But more, but most importantly, if this area does fail, then this will be considered to me a bull, tra a very uh, a confirmed bull trap, and likely incite a move, ignite a move um, down to the low side of the range. I'd be looking for a move probably at the very least to 3,500, and uh, personal opinion would be somewhere in the 3,400s, um, as we do fall at this area once again. But for right here, right now, while we are on the 12 hour total time frame, I do want to uh, pay special attention to this pink 200 simple moon average right here, which you can currently see is supporting price action, which is important because just like we looked at on the daily with the moving averages, the 12 hour 200 simple has actually been doing a very good job of getting that same sort of identification of the last kind of grasp for error on those uh, on those bull market rallies or sorry not bull market those bear market rallies which again the last time that we were even above it was over here on the september high at 7400 we break down below the 200 simple and then it's straight down to the uh, to the bottom of the range you, know, you got the same thing right over here at the at the run to 8400 break the 200 simple right here straight on down uh, down to the bottom of the range and same thing right over here where you know we break it uh, on the, on the run to 10,000 right here and then straight on down to the bottom side of the range so as bitcoin is still kind of rallying off of it i suppose that would be the i suppose that would kind of like be the last uh, grasp for hopium right here um if bitcoin is going to rally off this area and and maybe make another run at uh you know four thousand or so which i do think actually happens um i do th you know my opinion is probably that bitcoin spends time just going sideways in this area overall and when i say this area i mean between like 3300 and 4000 essentially just like what we saw at the 6000 level where bitcoin was bouncing off 6000 like five or six times or, or whatever it might be um Got to get that sex tuple bottom, bro. But again, uh, overall, these markets are designed to wear people out emotionally, get you onto a get you into a very emotional state, which is where you know you're not going to make good decisions upon. And then, and then the real move does occur. But for now, um, I do think that we're probably gonna we're probably gonna spend a lot of time just going sideways. Uh, and then, if a if a major break does want to occur. It probably won't happen for another, I don't know, I'd say, I'd say at least a month. Um, I don't think that we break down to new lows uh, this month, to be honest with you. I don't think that we break up above, you know, 4,200 4, uh, this month either. I think that we're probably just going to be in this range most likely. Um, again, can I be wrong on that? Of course, this is an opinion, not technical analysis. Don't listen to my opinion. My opinion's worthless. It's bullshit. But my technical analysis is something that I can actually trade off of. And that is why I'm not reliant on that. Anyways, um, okay, so we actually do have some interesting as well in the daily the daily uh 21 and 50 are actually rapidly approaching each other and with the cross of the downside which would also just kind of add you know fuel onto the fire for this having more more downwards momentum to you know the low side of the range and when i say low side of the range i mean you know 3500 and below essentially uh daily stoke still headed healthily down they are heavily in the bearish control zone now daily rsi completing the head and shoulders uh reversal and, and actually i do put more weight on a formation like this in the RSI chart rather than, you know, spot action price um, <clears throat> formations. I really don't like put plain formations there unless they're triangles typically. But as you can see right here, um, actually, you know, perfect cock and balls. And in fact, the last time that we did something like this was right over here when on one of the, you know, one of the last bull traps at 8,400, right? So again, similar sort of signature in this, a uh, little, little bit of differences, but overall the same sort of feeling. And that's what I'd be focusing on right here. Um, we do have the two day Stokes as well, which will be getting another tick tonight. This is going to be the next kind of piece of the pie, but uh, two day Stokes crossing down, gaining momentum down. I mean, each and every time that they've crossed in the last year, it has matched up with one of these highs. Same thing with the daily, which I forgot to talk about as well, but you know, we've been doing this a million fucking times already. Uh, basically the daily Stokes crossing right here is what we saw. Uh, the last few times that we've seen it in the past year, each and every time that we've seen in the past year cross above this area, or even, even below that area too, has been major dumps again. The dump from early September, 7,400. The dump from early August, 8,400. The dump from early May, 10,000. And the dump from um, 12,000 in February of last year. So again, looks like Bitcoin is ticking up right now. So might get that, uh, might, might be able to get filled on screen right now. And that'll be very exciting. I've been waiting all morning for this, finally. 
Um, and then it'd be just so poetic if it just blows right past me, goes straight to 3,800, and I'm like, oh, wrecked. <laughs> but of course, that's why risk man- That's why we have risk management. Again, not financial advisor, not a financial advisor. Anyways, uh, three day did just set itself in stone um, last night at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We have broken the 10 simple to the downside. Uh, this is the first time in about a month now that we've actually uh, been living below it. Uh, again, I kind of would be looking for a test back around that area. Um, Coming in around uh, 3745, 3746. So, you know, around that 3750 ish area. Um, and then I'd be looking for continuations. This does not, this looks like a clear rejection of the 21. Um, and again, same sort of thing for here on the 21 expansion moving average on the weekly, or sorry, not weekly, but three day to little time frame, which each and every time that Bitcoin's gotten above the yellow 21 expansion moving average for the for the past year, it caused the last kind of ditch of that uh, of, of that rally. If I can stop stuttering, apologies about that. Um, but basically, you know, you break it right here, down, you know, back to the downside of the range, break it right over here, back to the downside of the range, break it right over here, back to the downside of the range, uh, break it over here, back to the downside of the range, you know, each and every time, just perfect. Um, and now we have, uh, I believe, did we both open and close below this one? No, we did not. We did not open and close, but we did close uh, very obviously below it now. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, you know, I would be looking for a move to come back and test that 10 simple. Again, just another thing kind of aligning with that uh, with that thought process. Doesn't mean it needs to happen, but you know, when I'm looking at statistics and, and probabilities, that's what I think is probably a little bit more likely to happen, or at least something that I'd be I'd, I'd be cool with waiting for. I don't really want to enter in, in two positions right here, although overall, I think that it would be on the right side of the trend. It just doesn't offer up a good risk reward potential is the problem. And remember, whenever we're talking about trading or whenever I'm talking about trading, I'm thinking risk reward. And it's like if I, you know, if I enter here, well, I do think that, you know, it's very likely to go down. The re- the 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 risk is going to be a lot because I have to risk a lot more to find out if this trade is going to go against me or not compared with if I enter it higher. Um so cool. Anyways, uh, okay, we spoke about that. We spoke about that. Uh, shorts and longs on Bitcoin right now, still grossly imbalanced. We have 24,000 open longs versus under 18,000 open shorts. Uh, 3,000 3, of these guys hedged now. So a lot of these shorts are actually hedged, which is very bizarre. We, we quite literally only, ha- oh my God, I've never seen it this low. Uh, we quite literally have under 15, we have about 15 and a half thousand open naked shorts. Um, that's th- this something's going on right here, and and I'm glad that I looked at this. Something something's definitely going on. We have not seen above like uh like one and a half thousand uh, head shorts on Finex recently, but that that number has doubled overnight. And more importantly, it's already on the extreme low side as far as the total aggregate amount goes. So to me, this is a growth imbalance. Plus, there are a lot of people covering their long positions, which. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. Uh, let's in it. Actually, shorts are coming down uh, in real time right here. Uh, again, each and every time that shorts have gone into this range, it has been the warning signal. It has been the warning signal that you know massive dumps have emerged from each. Literally, each and every time that it's gotten down into this red box territory, you know this was your February dump from twelve thousand. This was your uh, May dump from ten thousand. This was your August dump from from eighty four hundred. This was your breakage of six thousand. Once again, we're in this range. Yes, we've been in here for about a week and a half now. Uh, we can stay in there for quite some time, as you can see uh, during past uh, past examples as well. But it is on the radar. And that's the big news and what I really always want to get around. So, you know, looking at the daily exponentials, looking at the 12 hour, looking at the daily Stokes, looking, I mean, we could also do the daily jewel. We've done it a million fucking times. You, you already know. Um, but of course, it's going to really come down to what is the reaction at this next support at the 3650-ish area. Uh, you know, obviously assuming that we actually do get back down around there, which I think is pretty likely. Um, does this area bounce it or not? Because if it, if it fails to bounce, and this will be considered, this will very well can be considered a, um, uh, a, I mean, basically a fake out to the upside. And whenever I see a fake out and it gets faded, that's usually the time to get really fucking bearish. Uh, if, if it's a fake out to the upside, if it's fake out to the downside, that's the time to get very, 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 very bullish. Um, but we saw a great example right over here, right? Remember this uh, last year? Everyone was talking about the falling wedge. Guys, a falling wedge. And I fucking hate wedges. I'm a wedge racist. They all suck. Um, and everyone's going on about the falling wedge. Guys, Bitcoin's doing a falling wedge. It's going to break out to the upside. And that's 13,000 measured move. And then 20,000. Okay. Don't be bearish. Dumb bears. Forget about the lower highs. 
Uh, we broke out of the wedge right over here, but look at the volume on it. Very, very lackluster. Uh, spends about a week above and then crashes back down below, breaks it right here, and then straight. I mean, this was such a brutal move. I'm sure a lot of people remember this. This was a very, 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 very powerful, very intense move from 8,400 down to 6,000 in the span of what felt like about a week. Most of the damage was done in one week, and this was, you know, every day was just basically down. Um, and I remember because everyone was fucking bullish, which is very similar to what we have right over here, where everyone's bullish. I mean, even going over to the crypto fear and greed index, uh, we're not really, I mean, people are kind of fearful right now, but just going over here to the actual chart, uh, let me remind you that we were all the way at a 69 on that run to uh, 41, 4200. So again, getting a lot of people, you know, riled up and uh, all lubed up, ready for the deal. But at the end of the day, has anything changed from from a macro perspective? No. Again, the macro perspective being, you know, at the very least a weekly. Um, the weekly, what I'm looking for on the uh, uh, as a macro perspective is I want to see a weekly dildo both open and close above the purple 200 exponential moving average, which is right here at 4100. Uh, we obviously have a very clear rejection um, a couple of weeks ago. So to say it's uh, I'd say that that's still very much well that's still very much well respected. Uh, even if we even if we did both open and close a weekly dildo above there, doesn't necessarily mean that the party's over for the bears. Uh, at that point in time, I'd go to the monthly and I'd say. Uh, the monthly 21 coming in all the way at 5200. That would be my next big signal. If that if that area gets taken out, I'd actually immediately flip from from bearish to bullish or or neutral to bullish, whatever it might be. I'd be fucking bullish is the is the main point. And then the third and final and most important, but you're gonna know beforehand most likely is if Bitcoin gets back above this the area breakdown at six thousand right over here, as my uh, voice tends to leave me once again. Um, but as you can see right now, you know on the monthly while we are here, uh, consolidation below the green fifty exponential moving average, which holding in all of these wicks uh, did did provide the initial support for this bounce in November on the first major down but after that lost it right here open and closed right here retested right here and so far rejected as at least as far as I look at it um, and if this is going to be considered consolidation which can be verified on the three day little time frame with the price structure and also the volume signature you can see you can you can start to say that all right well if that's consolidation below this major movement average then I'm going to be looking at the red and the 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 red and the yellow right here to kind of give the signal on the pressure on, on the on the on the more intense um, bought and algo trading behavior as they're going to be looking at something like this to kind of tell them about the general trend and as you can see right now it is certainly not a friend of the bulls I mean trend's been down ever since well <laughs> ever since you put in a lower high and a higher low fuck. Um, but overall, you know, if, if these are the cross and that is likely to be the impetus for breaking onto new lows. But of course, just like I said on the weekly, I need to see a weekly dollar both open and close above the 200 exponential moving average to start to change my views around. I need to see a weekly dollar close below, not, not, not open and close, but close below the 200 simple to the downside at uh, 3,400. So if that were to happen, I would start to look towards the next, uh, the next downside targets, which in my opinion, I strongly believe that Bitcoin will, will, will make lower lows. Um, and this is where I'd be looking towards oh my god we have a new person rob uh welcome p piotr peter peter hey what's up peter good to meet you man you must be uh you must be polish good to meet you my friend um anyways back now over here you know if the 200 simple does get demolished to the downside i would be looking for a move down to this next blue box territory right right between 2300 and 2600 this is also encompassed by the 886 but tracement which is where bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 right over here um you can also see some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area we do have some massive volume profile high high value nodes being thrown down in this area by the way as soon as we lose the last high value node in the 3400 region it's a straight shot down it was what it looks like just very similar to what we saw at the 6000 level where you know once once we lost that support, it was just it was fucking straight through. Like a hot knife through butter. Is that the same? Whatever. You know what I mean. It went down real fast. Like really fucking fast. Uh, fa faster, than, faster than the moon boys could say, RSI is too low, bro. <laughs> you know, shit like that. Um, <laughs> I remember reading, uh, I, those are my favorite times to go on crypto Twitter. And I remember reading like somewhere right around the 4,300 range, people are posting the RSI is screaming by. It's like, yeah. And it's going to be screaming by for a long more time. <laughs> Again, man, you know, when you're talking about major uh, market shifting moves, which this was, uh, you can't trust any any indicators when that when that kind of shit's going down. You have to wait like a couple months for it to really settle down. And as you can see, you know, if, if you were if you're listening to the screaming buy at uh, 4300, well, <laughs> 
you like it at 4,300, you're going to love it at uh, 3,100. Great number. Anyways, um, you know, going back to the higher time frames right here, yeah, you know, a few other things coming around that uh, 2300, 2600 area. We got the uh, 377 on the weekly coming around that area. We have the monthly 89 actually coming in around that area as well, which by the way, you know, this would kind of be the next uh, the next guy on the on the list if um if this consolidation breaks to the downside again it is being held be below the 50 pretty uh pretty steadily and i do believe that the 50 is the right way to be looking at this market i used to use the 55 but i believe that i was wrong about that when back testing the 50 it has a lot better um accuracy for bitcoin for the shit coins actually no funnily enough on the shit coins no the 55 works better but on bitcoin um it 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 has been the 50 that has worked better that uh, uh that i've seen to work better Anyways, um, okay, so actually while we're here, while we have the volume profile up, you can see very easily that uh, Bitcoin's kind of in a no man's land right now. Uh, we just broke down from this point of control. Next kind of pocket of liquidity is going to be in this uh, little bit below 3600 right here. And again, if that, area, if that area fails, then where do we go down to? Where we spent about a week and a half consolidating at that 3400 level, which is going to be absolutely critical, right? It's going to be absolutely critical because, well, that would be, you know, that's that's around the weekly 200 simple. So understand the implications of price action right now. Uh, overall, from a micro perspective, as long as we're below this, this 3950 resistance right here, I'd be overall bearish looking for this to have for the continuations lower. But um, in the very micro perspective right here, you know, I am actually looking for a perhaps a little bit more of an up i'd like another i'd like a run into this range right here and then and then reassess um but uh but overall you know things getting pretty tight right now and it does look to me like things are getting to move once again uh, in the next few days so 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 let's go see what gbdc closed uh, yesterday gbdc closing the day out um on its lows actually and same thing here though, you know, yeah, it did break the daily 21 exponential. Yes, this looks like a rejection of the 50. Yes, this looks like an overall bad setup. Yes, it looks like basically another lower high. Yes, it looks like a failure. Yes, it looks like a fake out. Yes, it looks like it wants to come lower. Yes, the daily stokes are pointed down, which each and every time that they've crossed down in this range for the last year, it has been a major dump. And hey, what's up, Renee? Good to meet you, man. Thank you for ruining the flow. All good, no, just kidding, man. Of course, just kidding. Jesus Christ, man hate to come off like that my god terrible first impressions but good to meet you my friend um where was i in my yes ladder <laughs> um yeah basically if i put back on the uh on, on the drawing tools right here where i get you know it's we can look at all those things and say yes it's a fucking great setup it's a great setup but i need to see this resistance or sorry this support trend line right here be broken to the downside and confirmed below on the downside because then that will confirm this to me as a fake out to the upside with a lower high intact and basically if we were to get a fake out i'd be looking for a quick move to the low side of the range that would put spot bitcoin somewhere around the 3400 mark and usually when you do get a fake out like this it will result in a breakage to the downside afterwards of, of that formation typically not always and we and in the example that we looked at on bitcoin for the falling wedge fake out uh that one obviously did not break on two new lows actually yeah no it, it did not break on a new lows from that move um so again I, i'd be looking for this this area is 420 right here great number um overall a lot of things pointing down don't get me wrong about that but uh hey until it's you know until it's confirmed and it confirmed if that's uh, not redundant enough anyways um what else do we want to look at do we can we go back on over to bitcoin over here is there anything on the four hour i believe that i didn't really look at the four hour uh four hour stokes are pointed up you know all the medium time frames want you know want up right here is what it looks like to me um <clears throat> so i wouldn't be surprised if we go sideways here let those kind of cool off maybe put in a test right around that 3750 ish range give or take a few bucks and uh then the real market begins once again with that in mind um i think the eight hour just finished so i'm curious what he's printing right now uh we'll be getting a nasty exponential moving average cross uh barring any unless if there's a run up above 3760 in the next uh in the next day or so we will get a nasty cross right there again just basically confirming this consolidation as down which you know you've already fucking know but then we get to play off the 10 simple after that um if we go over here to mrs litecoin what's she been doing or sorry let's go to mr buterol let's let's start talking about the shit coins or sorry highly esteemed amazing altruistic altcoins 
which are going to change the world. Uh, Mr. Butyrol right here actually already come back up and tested that 50 exponential, as you can see, uh, matching up perfectly with this horizontal trend line that we broke out of uh, about a couple weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. So as long as we're below there, I actually would be looking for this area to provide some resistance. Um, let's see what it looks like on a lower time frame. I'm curious. Uh, this is your four hour. Four hours being held, being governed by the 200 simple, as you can see. So that is very obviously support, you know, lining up with this horizontal at 128. As long as we're above 128, you know, don't want to, you know, I'm not really in any rush to get into the next move. If 128 does break, though, I would be I would be in a rush um, as you're probably going to see a move down to the 117, 118 region down around here, right around the 618 Fibonacci retracement, basically fulfill a retest of this broken trend line, or sorry, not this broken trend line, but this trend line has been governing the lows um, since, uh, since middle December. Um, by the same token, I'd be bearish to Mr. Butyrol as long as we're below about 135 and a half. Uh, so as you can see, it's got a lot of work to do. I think Daily Stokes still down. They're getting pretty low though, but uh, hey, they can stay low for a long time, bro. Uh, Daily RSI mm, bouncing off the uh, 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 bouncing off the bearish control zone, but overall, you know, again, need to see. It's it's probably going to, probably going to put some time in here. We are we are going to be flirting with a pretty nasty uh, moving average cross right here. The the, the red and the yellow. Um, which, you know, if we're consulting right here below a moving average, below a resistance as these two approach each other, same thing as what we looked at on the monthly for Bitcoin, right? I'm curious what the weekly looks like for Mr. Butyrol. Uh, weekly for Mr. Butyrol, yeah, it looks kind of nasty right here. Uh, two weeks ago, an, a very obvious rejection of the yellow 20-month expansion moving average, lower high all along the way, uh, hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point, as you can see on the RSI. We also do have the next week put in a doji still to hold it up above the 10 simple, but making new lows. And then this week has actually made new lows on top of both these two, uh, but still holding above the 10 simple as well. So again with it's it's kind of very it's very enlightening to see that the uh, stokes are getting all the way up here still not getting out of the bearish control zone while mr buterol still is basically going down for the last three weeks and um and, and I mean, a very clear rejection. I mean, look at look at the volume signature on this guy. This is very obviously consolidation. You see that nice orderly drop off in volume as we kind of put in these uh, in these spikes here. So again, when that when that sort of thing happens, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And right now, you know, there's nothing new about this trend for the last year. Down, lower highs, lower lows, bad. Um, Let's go over to Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing? Mrs. Litecoin, definitely the most healthy out of the big three. Uh, still holding up, up above the uh, above the weekly 21. The only one to do it of the big three that I, uh, I I believe, or maybe even the top 10. Maybe EOS has done it. Uh, Mrs. Litecoin. I mean, I mean, shit. You could you could make the argument that she's gonna try to put in some sort of bullish accumulation pattern right here, which I don't think is likely to happen, you know, because, and the reason why I say that is because Mr. Buterol and Mr. And Mr. Bitcoin are, don't really look like that. And we really haven't seen bifurcation in this market. Doesn't mean that it can't happen, but I need to see it happen first before getting on that side. I mean, as far as, as, as far as it's been known, I mean, Mrs. Lequin has been a perennial disappointer. She, you know, she, she, she might look great at some points, but just usually gives it up. Uh, still in the formation of this massive uh, rising wedge, rising, rising channel, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, similar, similar to Mr. Buterol as well, uh, funnily enough, or perhaps not funnily enough, uh, coming up right against resistance right here at this $46, uh, $46 and a quarter area. Um, as long as this holds, I actually would say that the play is to the downside. Uh, Daily Stokes did cross the downside and are confirmed to the downside. What's up, Wiki? Good to meet you, my friend. Good to have you in here. Uh, and I'll see you in a later video, my friend. Just you. Um, <laughs> It's getting weird in the cave today. Jesus Christ, man. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, but but major support right here at forty three and a half dollars. I mean, this is going to be a lot to chew through. As long as Mrs. Litecoin's above there, I suppose that there is a chance. Uh, but the second that forty three and a half dollars is broken, I'd be looking for a quick move down to uh, thirty nine and a half right here. Uh, also, the six one eight Fibonacci retracement. Also, this horizontal um, and basically a retest of this rising support trend line. Um, that we've seen as well. So that's what I'd be looking for if that were to happen by the same token. If we actually do break uh, 46, 46 and a quarter to the upside by end of day, well, then something, new's, something new perhaps might be going on. Um, I'd have to see it first, but basically we broke down from this rising channel so far. So I would be looking for this to probably follow the rest of the market um, if, it, if it moves downwards to the downside. Uh, we have a pretty uh, bad exponential moving average cross right here on the four hour. So again, uh, let's, see, let's see how the reaction is. 
Um, okay, cool. Let's go over and check out. Uh, do you want to check out all the shit coins now? Yeah, no, let's let's actually go through traditional markets first. Uh, traditional markets, I think finally, whoa, hey, nice buyback at the end of the day. Um, but basically the traditional markets, oh my God. So this is what makes it so difficult. Uh, daily ends above all major moving averages, even though it was a massive selling uh, during intraday. This is why I say wait until the end of the day. Now, of course, with with action like this, you think trap, right? You think trap right above resistance. You know, you open up the day above resistance. Everyone gets bullish. All the retailers buy in the first hour. Then after the first hour ends, then the sellers come in, and that's what we saw. But end of day, it gets bought right back on up. So this is uh, this is. <laughs> It's actually a little bit more neutral th th uh, than it is bearish right now, I would say. Yes, it does. Well, there, there's some good selling on this area. What I would say is that if you break 278 to the downside, then yes, I would look for continuation down to 275-ish area right here. Fill this gap. Um, and I think that that's I think that that's likely to happen. But technically speaking, when I do see something like this on the daily, I wouldn't necessarily get bearish off it immediately. I mean, daily stocks are coming down now. They are losing their formation here. I, I do think that is my personal opinion is that this one comes down now. Uh, do, am I talking like full on reversal back to back to new lows? No, I'm not saying that. I wouldn't. I don't think that's appropriate to say until this thing actually like busts through about two hundred sixty two dollars, which is way far down here, or maybe even two sixty four. Um, uh, at the most, at the most preliminary level, but right now, I mean, we're actually about to get a daily double golden cross. So I, I have a hard time being super bearish on something like that. Um, again, you know, I, I think a pullback is pretty likely. The question is, after that, uh, does the daily dildo golden cross get played or not? Well. We'll just have to wait and find out. But, you know, this thing can come all the way back down to to 275 and still not destroy its more bullish nature. If it destroys 275, then we got some new to consider. Still not over. I mean, you know, from, from a weekly perspective, we'd have to destroy 264, I believe it is. So it's got a lot of work to do. But as you can see, it does. the lower time frames do look like they want to come down. They do look like they want to come down here. So I'd imagine that today is probably going to be a down open, rally up on open, and then probably come down is what, you know, it's kind of what I want to see. But again, just because I'd be looking for some downwards action today doesn't necessarily mean I'm bearish just yet. A, a golden cross on the daily is never something that I want to denounce um, as Bitcoin ticks up right now. Good job, Bitcoin. There you go. There you go, you little amazing coin. I love you, Bitcoin. I actually do love Bitcoin. I, I am a long-term believer in Bitcoin, but... Uh, I'm not a believer in a bear market. I'm not a believer in being an investor in a bear market. I'll put it that way at the very least. Uh, so yeah, you know, I'd say I'd say more immediate time frames and spies. I'd be looking for it to come down, but I wouldn't be bearish if it got to 275, unless if it just absolutely destroys, demolishes 275. Uh, I wouldn't be bearish there. I, I don't like being bearish on a daily golden cross. I'll, I'll put it that way to be very, 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 very succinct. Um, I would be looking for a pullback into it, which looks very light. I mean, did we already even get that? We, we got all the way down to 277 or below 277 so fair enough let's go over the other top shit coins zekel cash z cash whatever the fuck cash uh wrecked cash is what it should be really called because my god forming a descending triangle and i guess it already just splurted out right over here uh really fucking bad we had a move from 51 uh, 51 dollars and 39 cents to 15 dollars and 52 cents that's right 51 and a half to 15 and a half what <laughs> it's not good man just lower highs lower lows uh nothing's good about this chart i mean if we even put it on a weekly more accurately um just looks like a massive massive cup that's what it looks like it's not a healthy chart uh bcash we got zcash we got bcash um looking bad as well not as bad but still pretty bad making lower highs lower lows <sighs> over the course of a year next support right over here uh, clear failure below the 20, I mean, not even failure below the 21, it failed below there a week ago. Uh, Tron Cash, um, hit the met, hit, hit the area that we were looking for yesterday, bounced off there. I'd be looking for a retest of about two dollar or sorry, two, two, two point four four cents. Um, that's gonna be where the next resistance is, though. Uh, Neo Cash, what's Neo Cash doing? Uh, yeah, if I, I mean, again, broke the 21, probably coming back to 870. See how it reacts there. I'd imagine probably selling uh, EOS cash. Uh, same thing, uh, just popping back up to test the 21 right here. So again, same thing as uh, Mr. Butero and Mrs. Litecoin in this rising channel. Uh, what about Ripple's cash? Uh, wrong Ripple's chart that I want to look at. Uh, let's go over here. 
Yeah, Ripple Cash still in a descending triangle. Um, overall, you know, you see, you, you, you see the way that an event acts, right? <sighs> Gets its Coinbase announcement the other week, right? It was some, something like that. Rallies up to test the tops out of the resistance, get it gets immediately sold into. Again, news bear, bullish news in a bearish market just gets sold into. Means nothing. It's just, it's just for the major market movers to have liquidity to actually dump on. Um, and as you can see that they're doing right now, it's been straight down ever since. Um, again, major support right here at a two, uh, at a twenty-eight and a half cent. If twenty-eight and a half cent is broken, then this thing can open the floodgates down into the low twenty cent, uh, high eight, high teen cent area. Um, but by the same token, you know, we need to actually see that broken down first. And uh, I'd be bearish on this guy overall as long as we're below 34 and a half cents. Uh, Monero Cash, what's Monero Cash doing? Um, same thing as all the other ones. Wow, crazy. This is so crazy, man. Uh, again, lower highs, lower lows. It's just holding the, holding into the consolidation. As long as we're below, you know, $50, I'd be overall bearish on it, and more immediately speaking. Uh, Stellar Cash, what's Stellar Cash doing? Definitely looking the weakest, weakest out of them all right here. Um, can't even hold on. Clear rejection of the 21 yesterday. Uh, if this thing, if it, I mean, yeah, I was looking at this as as an ascending broadening wedge, and we actually broke down below that as well. Very low volume on this, so I don't know how much I trust it, but uh, we'll be looking for a move lower. <laughs> All right, so let's get back on to Mr. Bitcoin and start to wrap this bitch up as, well, hmm, I think it's already been, we've already been speaking for so long. My God, guys, sorry about that. Um, okay, so yeah, I mean, as far as far as, uh, as far as the Bitcoin goes, not really much else to say about it other than this. You know, I'm looking for this test back into this uh, 3740s, 3750-ish area. Maybe it already happened. I mean, we just got up to 3727 and a half on BitMexico. So um, close enough is close enough. I mean, that's five bucks away from that green uh, 50. Um, but by the same token, as long as we're below there, I am overall bearish. We'll be looking for plays around here. Again, it's not financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor, and I will be managing risk very closely right above. To more importantly speaking, no trade is 100%. Um, by the same token, if we do break below 36, uh, 3650, 3660 right here, basically this uh, this this meeting of these uh, trend lines around the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. If we actually break that, I would be looking for a quick move down to you know low 3500, and that's that's where the that's where the interesting action will happen because I'm, uh, there's going to be a lot of buyers right there, most likely. So I'd be very interested to see what they um, you know what their reaction is. But if you know if we were to get down here. And then we bounce up and retest this area and reject from there. That's going to be the next big signal. So by the same token, it could break back above, about 3650. If that were to happen, then I would immediately get bullish to like 3900 or, or 4000 if that were to happen. Um, probably be another one of those quick moves. And what's up, uh, Jade App? Good to have you on Twitch, my friend. Awesome, man. I love to build up Twitch because Twitch is just like, it's such a secluded community that it, it, it just feels uh, unique. Anyways, um, I think that's going to do it for this video. Again, I'll be back on later tonight with some more live stream action, most likely. Um, hopefully, we can get some new action as well because that'd be awesome. I love looking at new action, uh, as I'm sure that you guys can tell because, well, it just gets fucking boring when you're, when, you're go, when you're doing this bullshit right here. It's not fun, man. It's not fun for anyone. So, Again, guys, um, probably during those times, I'll probably stop like doing videos and just record videos instead. But uh, but for now, you know, looks like we should be seeing some action today, or at the very least, uh, a nice range, which is certainly tradable. So looking forward to uh, getting back on later with some more live stream action. If if I don't see you there, well, I want to wish you a happy rest of your Tuesday. If I do see you there, well, see you later, my friends. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>